Hey, what's up? It is Cody from The Keepers of Nerdum. How y'all doing? In case you haven't seen, we've had several videos for shorts of Crash Dummies. And today I want to take you on a wild adventure of my childhood, but also really what in the world are these weird anthropomorphic crazy things? And unfortunately, I think even on YouTube, the idea is it sounds like we're saying something terrible by saying Crash Dummy, like we're calling somebody a dummy. And all they are is is legit, like the very thing that we have used of crash dummies, like test dummies for vehicles. And the entire line of toy was simply that. It was just an idea designed to be crash test dummies, to have fun literally wrecking the toys that you own into walls and just completely obliterating them. Apparently this guy has had his arms put on the wrong sides. And so uh, these things are fascinating because they tell an interesting story. And you know what? We're going to go straight up to the Wikipedia page because it's kind of funny to see what they have to say about it. And I personally own these. And actually, these newer generation models are actually some of my brothers. I'd stop buying from the, the set when they, they changed. And so the originals type stuff is mine. And unfortunately, there's a sad story right here because... Uh, we did the thing that kids should do. We played with them. We actually played with them. And so the original line of Crash Tummies, according to the Wikipedia page, was early 1991. And so they had Vince and Larry and uh, Daryl was a Generation 1 Crash Dummy. I am very proud to own him. And in fact, if you can look right here, his neck was actually broken for quite a while. And so for the longest time, his neck would not deploy. And even now, as you can see, it's it doesn't really work fully. But we got it glued together and, and re-strapped back off. But as you can see down in there, if it focuses, we had to claw back in there. Because as kids, we just glued him back together and said he's good enough. But he is still workable and as you can tell, he's he's seen a lot of car wrecks and motorcycle wrecks. And Daryl, Daryl's been through a lot. And so I'm very proud to still own him. But as you can see, he barely holds together because the original Gen 1, some of them were not built very uh very well, but I'm so happy to have them. One of the ones that was built well, and I'm still so impressed by him, is spare tire. And Spare Tire was, again, I believe he came with the uh, the Crash Chopper, so he came with the motorcycle, if I memory serves, or at least the sidecar. And so I'll show you the sidecar right here. This is the sidecar and the motorcycle it attaches to. And we'll, we'll give some examples here. But this thing is just, they're, they're an amazing toy from the 90s that I'm shocked that they ever came out. But Spare Tire, when you push his button, and he still works extremely well, his eyes shoot out, his not ears but look like ears shoot out, and actually you can extend them slightly, and his tongue also extends slightly as well. So, just a really funny little thing. And these Gen 1s were my favorites just because they, they lasted so long, and spare tire held up so well. But there were also, from Generation 1, uh, Pit Stop, I never saw that one, Hubcap, Hubcat and Bumper. So we've got Hubcat right here. And Hubcat literally just does this. I don't know what's the purpose here, but kind of just goofy silliness. And uh, Bumper, I, I was always in love with Bumper because we just always fought, found him really funny, especially because you could literally be like, ha ha ha, he's peeing. You know, and it, just that funny thing with it. But really neat concept, a great little toy. And like the target dog has the little different eye. And uh, I think we had... I believe it was Larry, student driver car, and I have the student driver car, and unfortunately, I think we had Larry, but what's left of him is just some legs, and you can see here on Bull, I think we had the legs and maybe a few arm pieces left, because unfortunately, several of the Gen 1s and the Generation 2s as well, such as Spin right here, as you can see, they were very much a spring-loaded mechanism. You can see down in there that there's two springs. And so you push down into that and connect him. And oftentimes these plastic pieces, especially when you were wrecking them and hitting them really hard, would just get absolutely destroyed. And so it was unfortunate, but let's be real. They were a toy, and they, they had hours and hours of fun. But you saw that it literally just 
pops out in the slightest touch. But the Gen 1s and Gen 2s had a lot of these where there would be these two buttons right here on the chest. And when you would hit them, he would just explode. And sometimes in this one, unfortunately, his, his head doesn't even work right because that's what we found would happen. That he would just break apart over time and the, the springs would stop working. And then unfortunately, what we did was throw them away and we started breaking, as you can see, some of the, the joint pieces. And so we replaced them with one of the other Generation 2's uh, joints. And it's unfortunate because there is also, I, I couldn't even tell you which ones these are without like looking it up and doing some crazy amounts of research. But we do have some of the Generation 2's. Uh, Vince was the gray crash dummy and we never had him. But we did have Larry and I believe that's who this was. And unfortunately... That's what's left of him. And I don't know that there's a, a date on the, the leg itself. But ironically, on some of the early generations, especially you can see right there, it says this is his right leg. And it's just in case you were confused. But crash dummies were fascinating because there were apparently four generations of them. And um, actually, then there was uh, crash dummies that were revived under the Hot Wheel brand. And I say that because I believe my brother actually got a hold of the Hot Wheels series. And the reason I say that is that right there, there was a sticker that was on it. And I'm guessing that was a part of this, this generation. And so these may very well be like a generation of five thing. I'm not a hundred percent sure on them. So it's, it's rather interesting to see the the changes because this is more like souped up cool motorcycle rather than the original series. Their motorcycle was old school, like cop car, kind of motorcycle stuff and we didn't have all of the cars for the generations of stuff but we did have the gen one blue student driver car and oh, that just fell we'll try to get a close-up and it's it's going to be too close to the camera but we have the original thing you can see student student driver student dummy on this right here and so it's it's been through a lot and as you can see it's actually still got the sticker up here which a lot of them usually peel off but even the this hood is not, it doesn't stay on anymore. But crash dummies were designed to wreck. They were everything about, oh, I forgot another generation one thing that we love to have. This is Skid the Kid. So we still have a few of the generation one stuff and Skid the Kid. He's still got his name, although it's starting to rub off on that, the D up there. But you really could wreck a baby. But ironically, it sounds silly and terrible. But at the same time, what's fascinating about it is this, that Crash dummies were illustrating the very thing that they were designed to do, test vehicles to see if it would, you know, if your, your dummy in this case would survive the crash and therefore is the car or vehicle safe for humans. And so it, it's, it's fascinating. It's amazing thing. So another one, uh, let's see right here. Bull is an interesting guy right here. He doesn't stay together. And as you can see, we had to just piecemeal him because over time we destroyed especially these types of bodies because they just got wrecked so hard. And unfortunately, like the newer generation, I'm guessing these are the Hot Wheels or maybe the Protex. I'll have to do some more research. But sometimes you hit the buttons on them and they like this one actually falls apart. But it's not it's just not to the same level as the spring loaded but that was honestly that's the most impressive of that generation. Bull on this this case he doesn't do anything. The only thing that he has actually is a waist that resets itself, but it actually as you can see it splits apart as he uh flexes. And so his design was he could like hit stuff. So he was like the reverse crash test dummy. But Bull, let's see. When did Bull come out? Bull in Protex suit flip over truck. I don't see Bull at all. I don't know. He's There's Bull in the Protex suit for Generation 3. So, And Generation 3 was 1993. Generation 2 was 1991 in the late part of it and, and into 1992. And so maybe he was Generation 3 in these Protex suits, which is kind of interesting to note. And I don't remember what his actual arms were, if that was actually the case and they were just differently shaped or not. But I don't remember. And so he was he was one of the latest the last ones that I got a hold of. And unfortunately with these newer generations, they don't have the names printed on the crash dummy itself because we've got several. We've got a blue, green, and or blue, green, and reds of this generation. And I'm not sure exactly which generations they are, but they did, I believe, come with 
this with the Hot Wheels brand. So I'm guessing they were even Generation 5, actually, all the way up in 1998. Because we remember that they got revived. And it's it's pretty interesting that they, they brought it back, but it wasn't... It wasn't quite in the same way. And so Crash Dummies was an amazing toy. And I want to just illustrate exactly what all of these toys did. And so first off, let me see what generation this was. I have the lawnmower with whack. And so I'm guessing uh, Crash Lawnmower with whack. So that's generation two. With It says Skid the Kid with it, but that doesn't make any sense at all. And so I have the Crash Lawnmower. I didn't have everything because it got crazy. I, apparently Crash Lawnmower with Whack may have been Gen 1 and in fact came with Hubcap and Bumper the Cat and Dog. And so what you've got here is an amazing little toy that it actually still works really, really well. So if I push this, I'm going to try and give you space. It shoots off the engine pieces. You can see some of the paint chipping off, but then it, it causes this to rear back and hit the crash dummy in the chest just to make them pop and explode and do their do their silliness. And toys like that, it's amazing. But one of the coolest parts about it was things like this where they had even, this was weird. This was the most bizarre piece that the, the toy line had. Because what this did was you'd literally strap your crash dummy to the table here. We'll see if we can still get him because it, it was adjustable and all this stuff. And I mean, this is literally like torture device. Very, very, very strange. And poor Daryl here, he is, he's seen many a thing and he's about to see one more. And so ironically, what you would do with this is it would actually adjust and you would adjust the crash dummy until it pulled him apart and vice versa like a very very strange toy and so he would pop out some of this daryl is so old though he just doesn't stay together to keep it but it was fascinating that there you know here's a here's all this crash test equipment and then we're literally just going to strap them to an ancient medieval torture device and pull them apart i think they kind of just lost their minds and went you know what let's just be silly and let's put them on there but unfortunately as you can see this has seen better days and the, the plastic piece that it connected to its base with has lodged in there and broken off. We were rough on these things and, and, and rightfully so because this toy was just, it was glorious. And let's put spare tire and skid the kid because those are, and Daryl, they are the, the top pieces that are left here. And also spin, which is a generation two from the late 91 and ni into 92 and spin apparently came with student driver car with axle. And so it's possible I got him from having the car in generation two, but I think I had Larry from generation one. So I'm not, I'm not sure we had a student driver car with axle. I'm going to have to look up exactly which one axle is. Um, but uh, we'll talk a little bit further about this as well, because these are fascinating. I'm going to look up Axel and see which one he was. Axel was the green crash dummy. And so he, <laughs> this is what we have left of Axel, unfortunately, is a few pieces like this. And so Axel didn't, um, oh, that reminds me. Yeah, I still have his head with the glasses for Axel. He actually had a nerdy look to him which was really funny but unfortunately his body didn't survive very long so i'm not really sure which crash car we have because i don't know they both look like they they seem similar so let's talk about this thing for a little bit this was a part of a large play set that they had and you can see it it has got a handle and everything and what you would do is literally squeeze that handle and send a crash dummy flying with a chair that you could equip right here in these bracketed sections. And so everything about Crash Dummies was designed for pure wreckage. And that chair we still have today, if I can, oh, can't find it right now, but let's illustrate a little further because their, their major toy line that they had, had a large massive plastic base and inside of it was this and several other panels as well and you could put the the torture chamber device there as well you'll notice right here these two knobs it was four rubber band things that came with it and you would strap a chair or something and strap a crash dummy to this and ram them with a car 
And so what's really cool about this is this is actually a button and not just a button. It actually had an interaction with the impact meter and it would go all the way up here. And this is your reset button. And so when you would hit this button, it would actually tell you how hard you hit. And then you could actually reset it back down to do it again. And so, you know, rear back with the car or the motorcycle and hit as hard as you can, or in this case, potentially hit a crash dummy. And so this toy, honestly, it held up really well considering what happened to it and what we, we put it through. Because sometimes we were rearing back and just almost throwing these things at the crash test meter. And it's it's amazing how well this thing has held up. And you can even look on the back. It's just, just stayed together. And it got beat and beat and beat. And yet continued. And so the, uh, the car, again, it's hard to really show with the camera. And I apologize, but we'll take off the, we're going to take off the top for a second. This car is fascinating. And we'll show a little bit of the explosion here because it actually has seat belts and the, the seat belt would then land in here and you, so you strap there and then have a third connection point up here. So you could actually strap your crash dummies in to see how they would do with their impact. But what was really neat was the, the doors could come off, um, the, the entire roof, it was designed for this to pop out. And the reason that crash sticker is there is because the passenger, if you'll notice, it is different than the, uh, the driver's seat because it is designed to actually shoot out and throw the crash dummy through the wall. And so you'll notice here, this is all designed to crunch. Uh, the wheels have gotten a little bit jankety over the years. But when you hit this thing, what's interesting is there's a lot, and there's even an airbag in this thing. Let me get it all set. So now it is set. You can see it down in there. The airbag, actually, whenever you push this, see if we can get both here. The airbag will deploy. The And you can see it's definitely discolored from over years of use and wear and tear. And this will shoot out. There is a uh, section down there that pops this out. And so the car itself in the front deploys and the wheels, as long as they're in the right spot, are designed to shoot out. And this one actually shot off on the other side. And it's just another spring loaded thing that they, they come out. And unfortunately in this case, this one will refuse to come out ever. So, and that's, that's the idea with all of these toys was just pure silliness and you could reset these things because all it was was pushing this back down and locking it in place and then again locking and you could do this and see if it clicks and it, it clicked in there unfortunately you can't really hear it but if you do it again Same thing, which is really amazing. So everything about this was designed for reusability and it's kind of impressive all the detail that went into it. These are a great toy. These are an amazing thing. I, I wish in some ways that we could bring stuff like this back because this is a generation that just we don't understand today. And so examples like this, that this motorcycle, the button was right here underneath the, the wheel. And so it was designed for this to shoot up launching people forward it would actually dislodge the the uh, sidecar the sidecar comes apart in two pieces and this flies apart as well the the windshield actually came off whenever the wheel hit it from the other thing and so this is this is all sorts of crazy and again i'll try to show you a little bit of it and when you're ramming something it's designed for this to completely explode and as you see the the chair comes out this comes apart. It's all designed to be reset and done again. And that beautiful, old, awesome logo of Vince and Larry. And so this is a toy that, do I know everything about it? No, by no means, because we stopped collecting after the first generation and really second primarily. And so unfortunately it just uh, died off for us. But then apparently my brother did get into some of the more modern stuff as well and I, I don't I don't remember him getting these things and these were oh oh there's a date here let's see 2003 Mattel 2003 Mattel so let's see exactly what we're talking about here 2003 Mattel Hot Wheels Mattel revived the Crash Dummies line under the Hot Wheels Hot Wheels toy brand 
So this is apparently from 2003, and it was in 1998, it was revived. So this would be under the, the generation, really five Hot Wheels series of Crash Dummies. So anyway, uh, what I really want to know is what is your favorite toy from growing up? And do you still have it? Do you still like, do, do you try to collect it now? Do you have something about it that you just continue to, to go for and, and look at and try to find? Honestly, look at that. He still has his like little joint that keeps it in place. And I love the shortness of spare tire and the, the pot belly for no good reason. But really, what is it? What is your toy that just makes you laugh that you collect today as an adult because you just want to have it on a shelf somewhere to go? Yeah, that was something from my childhood that did so well, did so amazing. What is it? Let me know in the comments below. I'll talk to you later.